right over there behind me is the future site of Sidewalk Toronto. It's the proposal's modular housing and office buildings will study occupants' behavior while they're inside them to make life easier. According to the proposal, residents and workers will be universally connected by powerful broadband and served by futuristic conveniences. A smart city can't be understood or discussed without reaching back and talking about surveillance capitalism. A smart city isn't just a city that has technology in it. It's a city with a certain kind of ideological framework that uses technology to reach its end goals. A smart city is usually understood as a urban environment that uses ubiquitous sensing technology and data analytics to understand phenomenon within city spaces. On the data end of things, smart cities claim to be collecting more data, which they are, and claim to be using that collection and, and analysis to better respond to urban issues from environmental degradation to transportation, planning, and the like. We can analyze four different features of the smart city. The first is to increase and integrate surveillance of many, many different kinds. Second, to create a superficial sense of participation among the inhabitants of a city, to encourage economic growth at two different levels, localized gentrification and impelling this new economy that is taking shape. The final function of the smart city is to create a superficial arena in which people can passively support ecological or environmental proposals while also denying them the opportunity to develop a global consciousness of the environment and of environmental problems. So smart cities are different and not so different from cities that exist in capitalism. But I think that the difference would be the use of technology to further surveil the public and to use that data to intervene in ways that can increasingly control and manage the population that suits the interests of a political economy of capitalism.